हेलो विजय नजय नजन सन Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Kenyans, I am very delighted, and I stand before you here today, a proud son of Kenya, a liberation fighter, and a servant of the people for the last 50 years. Today. I boldly declare that I'm neither repentant nor regretful of my own experience in the fight for a liberated Kenya. I bear my physical and psychological scars with pride. And this is because my country was worth it then and is worth it now. I bear scars of liberation with pride and embrace the blood, sweat and tears they cost me. By the way, the tears from the torture chambers are still running as you can tell from the handkerchief that never leaves my hand. For years I was not allowed to speak with other inmates. In fact, for 60 straight years, I did not sleep on a bed. For months on end, I was either held in comunicado, in solitary confinement, or handcuffed and in transit to the next prison or detention camp. A relative died, including my blood, blood mother and my own brother, and I never got the chance to say goodbye. I would not wish this to torment upon anyone, not even my worst enemy. Together with my comrades who endured torture and survived those dark days of despair, You would never let Kenya degenerate down the road of terror. No, not on our watch, not on my watch. But there was a positive side to my story. It's about a friend, Alando, of legendary beauty, with brave heart of Luanda Magere. And this is the woman who stood by me when I was shunned by many. This is the wife of my youth, love of my life, and partner to death, Mama Aida Betty Nyawira Odinga. In those Hard times of long and uncertain incarceration. If I was not reading the Holy Bible, I found deep solace in Mama Aida's love and support. She became a constant guest of the police cells through constant arrest and harassment. I can't thank her enough. Thank you, darling. Fellow citizens, what makes a great nation is not the men it produces, but the men it honors. That is why I would be remiss if I do not pay homage to those that gave us the sacred license to stand tall, to speak free, and to think big on this very day. And here I'm talking about my comrades in arms, both alive and those who have fallen. I pay homage 
to those who have gone before us, the fallen heroes of the second liberation. These include Kenneth Nido Matiba and Charles Robia. Many do not recall that I was detained at Kamiti Maximum Prison on the same day with two compatriots on the 5th of July 1990, 1990 for demanding multipartism. Other fallen compatriots include George Anjona, Jean Marie Sirone, Martin Shikuku, Mukaru Nganga, Okio Kombaka, and Wangari Madai. I also pay homage to all the audacious martyrs who, for the sake of the people, shows constant crucifixion over relative comfort of conceding to repression. I hold the deepest respect to living icons like Mukami Wakimath, the wife of Didan Kimath. They called her the wasp because like Kimathi, her husband, Mukami was a fearless fighter who mobilized daring hand bands of women in complex undercover Mau Mau operations. I salute her. Other liberators include Gugi Wadiongo, whose powerful written words enrich the ideologies of the struggle against the one-party regime. Koigi Wamwere, whose fearless voice inspired many to action. I remember Dr. Odiyan Bombay, the fearless chair of the Devolution Committee at the Bombers Conference, who was brutally assassinated, and Dr. William Mutonga, who distinguished himself as a selfless champion of social justice and the comrade, comrades in the detention chambers. We also had Katama Mukangi, Kaimoji Wachira, Alamin Mazrui, all those colleagues who were with us at that time. In the course of this, this struggle, there have been ups and downs, advances and retreats, but we have never lost our direction. At this point, I must pay homage to my brother, His Excellency, President Uhuru Migai Kenyatta, for the foresight and sense of patriotism in initiating the dialogue that led to the handshake. It takes a seasoned statesman to shake the hand of his rival. I thank him. In the course of our discussions, we agreed that Kenya is greater than the two of us. We agreed that despite years of effort, Project Kenya has not quite taken the way of how our fathers envisaged. Where our founders envisaged unity, we have been held back by divisions, tribe against tribe, region against region, men against women, leader against leader. As if these divisions have not been costly enough, there are still massive efforts by other people to divide, divide us further. As rich and poor, young and old. We agreed that where our fathers dreamt of plenty within our borders, poverty has taken deep roots in our land. We agreed that it must deal a deadly blow to corruption before it brings down our country. We resolve to work together to unite our people in order to realize the Kenyan dream as coined by our founding fathers. Justice is our shield and defender. 
May we dwell in unity, peace and liberty, plenty be found within our borders. That is the foundation of the Azimio La Umoja. I must add here that with this reconciliation, I ask for nothing and I will never ask for anything except the opportunity to serve. Peacemaking is not a self-enriching enterprise. It is a calling from God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Fellow countrymen, let me shift gears now to other stories. Daughters I witnessed, listened to, and collected on my Zimio La Umoja tour of every corner of our greatest republic over the last three months. This meeting today, the culmination of the Zimio La Umoja journeys we have taken together. And you have already seen through the videos some of the issues that were raised during the consultations. Kenyans spoke from their hearts during the 15 Azimio La Umoja Mammoth meetings. At the coast, Wanainchi reminded me that land issues remain a subject of pain. Many families long for the privilege of possessing family land that they can pass down to generations. They cried about the huge impact of the standard gauge railway on their businesses. We traveled into the river, North Rift, and there I listened to concerns of residents whose livelihoods are being destroyed by cartels in agriculture. People who import maize while farmers are stuck with their maize. They lamented the collapse of the dairy and tea sectors and the high cost of farm inputs. The communities of West Pocot County wondered where there was a West Pocot when there is no East Pocot. They asked to be identified specifically as a community in the national census with a code and their own development projects, and the creation of two more constituencies and five wards. I also spent time in the Mount Kenya, both the west and east, and I can confirm to this congregation that if the mountain was smooth, it would be impossible to climb it. The mountain has to be bumpy for you to scale it. On this, I'm happy to note that I've reached very close to the peak. I've seen the Batrian and the Lenana peaks, and the people have promised that we shall walk together to the promised land yonder. If I prove that I understand and shall address their concerns. Residents express concerns about the equitable distribution of development resources within the region and the proportional representation. They summarize it in the one call one man, one shilling, one vote. And they want to and they want to earn more from their tea, coffee, parathram, vegetables, potatoes, rice, and dairy. Nyanza complained about non-functioning and collapsed cotton, sugarcane, fishing, tobacco, tea, 
and soapstone industries and the denial of economic opportunities for the region. In Turkana, the co continuing challenge of general insecurity, poverty, drought and famine were raised repeatedly. In the Lower Eastern, the local communities complained of a serious lack of water, recurring famine, and lack of economic opportunities. Northern Kenya felt profoundly let down by Nairobi. Their children are being denied identity cards by their own county, country. Education is collapsing due to insecurity and livestock sector is severely threatened by drought and disease. I took note that while our people of Mount Kenya spoke of one man, one vote, one shilling, Northern Kenya spoke of one man, one kilometer, one shilling. Indeed, Kenya is diverse in its needs and its ideas to address the needs. In Western Kenya, I was repeatedly reminded of the local industries like sugar that had been allowed to collapse due to corruption, neglect, and mismanagement. Fisheries and mining are struggling. Young men and women who would have gained from the local thriving industries spoke of how they are forced to migrate from home to seek opportunities elsewhere. The Mark community is worried about lack of livestock and pastoral, pastoralist economy. They worry about the environmental degradation upstream which impacts them directly. They have their historical injustices of a land. Then they are also concerned about the environmental degradation and uh, the Mao forest. These are just some of the concerns that I noted, internalized and, and that took, took them on as a personal mission. Listening to our people made me look back over the last five decades. It became crystal clear that when much has been achieved, much remains to be done. I stand here deeply concerned, indeed horrified, at how our peers at independence left us far behind. Nations like South Korea, Malaysia, and Singapore, with whom we were at the same level of development in 1964, have largely vanquished us and they have vanquished the extreme poverty. Today, they manage the diseases like COVID as effectively as all other functioning countries. Their education systems are a dealt a deadly blow to the ignorance and put them in the Premier League of the Fourth Industrial Revolution. You have to change tact. You have to catch up. Fellow Kenyans, following the listening hours and to address the concerns that have emerged, we came up with a 10-point people's program as follows. Point number one, Enoa Jami Pesam Fukoni, a nation's greatest greatness is judged by how it treats its poor and vulnerable. Pesem Fukoni is a social protection program that will deliver 6,000 shillings per month to the 2 million
to the two million of the country's most needy families. And I want to emphasize, it is not a handout, but an investment and a foundation for a new transformational value chain that will also trigger massive economic activity and create thousands of localized small-scale businesses and enterprises across the country. This will lead to millions of jobs and the eventual development of a thriving middle class. The resulting middle class and small and medium enterprises will be a robust market for larger, more national corporations. Point number two, Baba Care. Each of us has experienced the all-consuming strain that accompanies the ill health of a family member. We will ensure that each and every Kenyan has a social insurance, a health insurance uh, uh, plan. Those who cannot pay, the government will pay for them so that no Kenyan should die or suffer or lack treatment because of lack of money. Point number three, Kazi Kwawote. This is about securing the welfare of the people by generating avenues for productivity through job creation programs for investing in the critical Juakali sector and other macro, micro and macro economic simulation schemes. Point number four, Uchumi Kwa Kinamama. This will focus on the true multipliers of the wealth in our community, our women. The program will unlock access to financing for women-led businesses and provide support for women and other enabling factors such as access to assets for production, land tenure and a proportional representation in all government levels. Point number five. Hashtag in Awezekana. We know that our youth are closer to the future than we are. But they are exploited as cannon fodder for bad politics. Now more than ever, we need to invest in preparing our youth for that future. The program will equip our youth with the mindset, skills, funds, and technology to enable them innovate at par and even surpass their global counterparts. Point number six, waste not a, a single child. Education is non-negotiable. This program be an aggressive scheme to ensure that all, not some of our children, get rightful access to quality education. Point number seven, for Northern Kenya, sorry, sorry. Point number seven, Fukuzanja. The aim here is not to merely feed, but to generate agricultural bounty that Kenya has the potential to produce. We will factor in climate change, adaptation, and mitigation to support and help realize high agricultural productivity across the nation. Point number six is about northern Kenya, where children have dropped out of school because of lack of, of teachers. We will have affirmative, uh, affirmative action program to ensure that teachers are admitted at a lower rate so that we can have sufficient teachers 
to teaching schools in northern Kenya. Point number nine, one county, one product. I firmly believe that the idea of devolution in Kenya has the transformative potential of rich mineral mines, abundant oil fields, and other traditional markets of a nation's affluence. One county, one product program is designed to be a launch pad to a Kenya which consumes its products, exports excess and registers surpluses, no deficits. The national government will support materially and technically towards an ultimate vision where the 47 counties will begin industrializing at unstoppable rates. The tenth pillar of my vision has to do with the principles of administrative continuity. By continuity, I mean building and improving on the gains that have been made by the administrations that came before. Africa suffers a retrogressive mindset of starting afresh instead of advancing existing accomplishments. When one administration sets up something, the next knocks it down. This makes many countries in the continent stuck in a constant state of ignition, never making it to acceleration and takeoff. Kenya must not be a start-stop nation. This is a waste of time and resources and should not be entrenched in Kenyan political culture. For example, President Kenyatta's Linda Mama program could not have worked without the construction of health facilities and upgrading of transport networks that we undertook during the Grand Coalition Government. The plan for a rapid bus transit system could not have been operationalized without the construction of the Thika and Bagadi roads. The plan for the Lamu port dates back to 1972 when President Mwai Kibaki was finance minister. It took almost 50 years for it to be launched by Kibaki as president in 2012 as he was leaving office. President Uru Kenyatta took it up in 2013, ran with it and has implemented it. Lamu project is one whose ultimate vision I see clearly. Ignore it one squanders opportunity. By another 50 years, to have a World Cup transshipment hub that will reap, reap, reap exceptional economic benefits for our country. My manifesto will bear a crystallized description of the 10-point people's program delving into workings and plans that will actualize it for the people. These are just but highlight of new programs that we shall roll out to respond to needs expressed at Azimula Omoja events. Very soon, ladies and gentlemen, I will unveil a detailed manifesto addressing the critical concerns like corruption, public debt, industrialization, ICT and digital economy, promotion and protection of businesses, and particularly protection of private property. Our business community deserve protection and they will get it. Fellow citizens, at the top of our national government, where leadership is exercised to the maximum, in governing and changing our nation is the presidency. The president makes a difference in the life of this nation. Having listened to your calls during our conventions, give my credential to this congregation and the nation at large, and having spelled out the people's aspirations, as I understand them, 
and the Azimio la Umoja and having given my 10 point vision for Kenya on this day of December 10th, 2021, I, Raila Amolo Odinga, having been having having been faithful and committed to building a national democratic and progressive Kenya in our lifetime having worked for many patriotic Kenyans to achieve this goal I do hereby accept to present myself as a presidential candidate at the presidential elections on the 9th of August 2022, following the request and anonymous invitation of the President to oppose anyone but to propose better policies. I am in this race to build one indivisible nation. I am not at war with any personalities. I am at war with ideologies that will lead this nation in the wrong direction. Ideologies that divide us instead of uniting us. Ideologies that put the personal above the national good. Now, now I want you to listen to me. Vijana Mpo, Vijana Hwe, Wajanis Malize Kwa Kiswahili. Mimi, Natoa Shukrani Kwenu Nyote, Kwa kufika siku ya leo kwa wingi Kwa ishere yetu ya leo Kwa sasa mimi nataka kutangaza Bada sisi kuzuru Kenya mzima Na kuangane wa Kenya Nilikuwa ni mewauliza Baba andelea siendele Andelea siendele Sababu leo Leo ni mejibu Ati baba ataendelea Na tarehe Tisa Mwezi ujao Mwezi wa tisa Baba atakuwa Kwa kinyara kinyiro ya kukombea kiti ya rais Kwa jamuri ya Kenya Lakini vile vile Mimi nasema Bada ya kuzunguka kile mahali Tulikubaliana na ndugu yango huru kinyata Tutaleta wa Kenya pamoja Na kuna vitu vitano Mwaja na hituwa Utu Pili ni undugu Tatu ni umoja Na ni usawa Tatu ni uzalishadi Haya yote likukanisha pamoja Na likitna hituwa Azimio la umoja Kwa hivyo 
Nataka Let me my years Ngoje ni kidogo vijana Ngoje ni kidogo vijana Vijana wewe Vijana wewe Vijana wewe Natangaza Kuanzia leo Azimio la umoja itakuwa azimio la umoja movement na itakuwa itakuwa ni mseto it will be a coalition azimio la umoja movement na nikisema azimio mnasema inawezekana azimio la umoja Azimio 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 Leo tuko na hereby launch Azimio la umoja movement Na ito Tuimwe kwa pamoja wananchi tuimwe kwa pamoja Mishangilie Kenya taifa letu tukufu Kenya tuna Tunaombwa tupeane nafasi muafaka wananchi tusalie tumetulia ili kumruhusu viongozi kumpa kongole injinia daktari Raila Amolo Odinga kwa kubali mwito na niombe nipewe leo ni leo